this video covers my top 5 takeaways from the little book that beats the market by Joel Greenblatt, the creator of the magic formula. Before I jump straight into the takeaways and the magic formula, I'd like you to consider what you should be doing with your money. You could leave it in the bank and get eaten by inflation, or you could invest in the stock market. Between the two, it's obvious that investing in the stock market is the better choice. Now the problem is that most people do not have the experience or time to treat investing like a business. They do not have the time to study the companies and view it as a business. Or as Joel puts it, choosing individual stocks without any idea of what you're looking for is like running through a dynamite factory with a burning match. You may live, but you are still an idiot. Does that mean that the retail trader is doomed to fail? Well, there's a solution that Joel teaches. Before I go on to takeaway number one, I would appreciate it if you could take 3 seconds of your time to like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel. There are a ton of Forex videos on our channel which are designed to help you become a better trader. I also have a free day trading guide which you can download via the link in the description below. Takeaway number one, logic doesn't drive the market, emotions do. Let's take a look at a company like Boeing. Last year, you could have purchased Boeing for as low as $300 and as high as $445, a price difference of almost 50%. Across a mere couple of months, you could have paid 50% more for that same stock if you entered in late. Now what's the point here? Well, Boeing's underlying business didn't shift much in value during that short period. Its core business remained unchanged and yet the market was overreacting to any public information about the stock. Let's consider another example, say Amazon. Similar to Boeing, you could have bought Amazon as low as $1,290 or as high as $2,035, a price difference of more than 55%. Do you think Amazon sold 50% more products during that short period? Probably not. This demonstrates that the market is not always logical and is primarily driven by emotions. Never expect the market to behave rationally. Takeaway number two, valuing a company involves making assumptions and estimates. When you look at the stock price, its fluctuation is telling you that the market isn't efficient. Otherwise, everyone will agree on a set price and the stock price won't change. Sometimes investors are greedy and prices become too high and other times fear is rampant and price drops as investors exit out of their investments. Consider the following example where your cousin owns an e-commerce store. His e-commerce store made a profit of $300,000 last year. As an investor, how much would you be willing to pay to acquire this business? Well, that's a really hard question, isn't it? If you thought that was difficult, then you are going to struggle when it comes to the stock market. You are typically provided with more information, some qualitative and some quantitative to determine the price of a business. Here are some pointers that you might consider for this example. Firstly, you have to determine if the $300,000 profit generated last year is likely to be higher or lower this year. Secondly, you also have to consider how confident you are in your prediction that the figures will stay the same. Remember that a business is affected by many factors and expenses may increase. Lastly, you have to consider the long-term prospect of the business. Do you foresee the industry going year on year with increasing figures? Or are you investing in a sunset industry that may not exist 5 to 10 years from now? Takeaway number 3. Understanding price to earnings and return on assets. In the earlier examples, we concluded that the value of stocks can vary drastically within a short period. Understanding the concept is easy, but knowing when it is cheap or expensive is difficult. That is why you need to understand price to earnings and return on assets. Let me demonstrate how the concepts work through another example. Suppose my cousin has a competitor who runs a similar e-commerce store that earns $100,000 per year in profits. Both businesses are being sold at $900,000. Between the two, which would you buy? You would buy my cousin's e-commerce store, of course. You would only be paying $3 for every dollar in earnings, or what we call a price to earning ratio of 3. If you opted to buy the other e-commerce store, you would be paying $9 for every dollar in earning, a price to earning ratio of 9. Another way of saying this is that it would take you 3 years to make back your initial investment in my cousin's e-commerce store and 9 years if you invested in the competitor's store. 
the price to earnings ratio is one of the most common ways of valuing a company in a stock market. It is calculated by taking the current stock price and dividing it by its earnings. You would rather own a business at a low price to earnings ratio than a high price to earnings ratio since it would mean that you will recover your investment faster. But again, investing isn't so straightforward as price isn't everything. Some stocks have a low price to earnings ratio because they are not doing well. Thus, it is important you also look at the return on assets. Back to the example, suppose my cousin needs $600,000 while his competitor requires $300,000 to build their e-commerce stores. Now assuming that everything else remains equal, which would be a better investment? Well, my cousin's store costs $600,000 to build and pulls in a revenue of $300,000. And the competitor's store costs $300,000 and pulls in a revenue of $100,000. It should be clear that my cousin's store would be a better investment. This is what is known as return on asset. The higher the percentage, the better it is. It tells you about the quality of the business and gives you a yardstick to measure similar companies with. Takeaway number four, the magic formula. If you apply the principles taught in takeaway number three and buy companies with a high return on asset at a low price to earnings ratio, you will more often then buy underpriced businesses. Joel calls this the magic formula and created a system that will help you do just that. The magic formula involves ranking companies according to their combined scores based on two factors, the quality and price of the business. Based on what you learn above, it does sound logical to base your investment decision on the above two factors. But for all of you who are still doubtful, Joel backtested the magic formula for 17 years and found that it outperformed the general market. While the general market was returning about 12.3% per year, the magic formula was doing 30.8% a year, a difference of about 18%. And while this might not sound that significant, Consider the effect of this difference when we take compounding into the equation. If you have invested 1000 using the magic formula, you would have almost made $100,000 versus just slightly over $7,000 if you invested in the general market. Sure, some of the companies that meet the criteria might turn out to be a bad investment. But what you should be interested in is the overall picture of whether the magic formula beats the general market in general. In his book, Joel further divides companies into 10 different groups and ranks them with the formula and you can see the results here. I will not go into full details on how he further divides them, but for now, you can see that the magic formula is quite magical. Takeaway number 5, implementing the magic formula. What good is convincing you that the magic formula is powerful if Joel doesn't teach you how to implement it? The first thing you want to do is to go to magicformulainvesting.com. Once at the website, select a company that is 50 million or bigger. You will then be guided with instructions to generate the list of top ranked stocks based on the magic formula. Based on the list, you want to buy five or seven of these companies using 20 to 35% of your investment capital. You want to repeat this every quarter until all your investment capital is fully deployed. This should result in a portfolio of about 20 stocks or so. You want to hold these stocks for about a year and repeat the entire process. Sounds easy? It certainly is. But if you don't wish to automate your investment and like to take a more active approach, you can use the magic formula just as a screener. The magic formula will show you what stocks you should be focusing your attention on and you can go ahead to perform your analysis to make your conclusion. And that's the top 5 takeaways from this book. Here's a quick summary of the book. The stock price fluctuates more than the underlying business value and thus allows you to buy good companies at a cheap price. It is however difficult to estimate the future earnings of a company since the factors affecting the business is always changing. To help you do this, you want to consider the price to earnings and return on asset of the business. The magic formula advocates focusing on stocks with a low price to earnings and a high return on assets. This formula has beaten the market by a wide margin over time. If you learn something valuable and 
useful from this video, I would appreciate it if you could like this video and subscribe to this channel. Do make sure to turn on the notification bell so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. I also have a free day training guide which you can download via the link in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.